Hello, future engineers. This week in NPHYS 131, we're going to be measuring the energy of a pendulum as it oscillates back and forth. So you're going to have to make a pendulum. It's a fairly simple apparatus. You're going to need some string. Uh, you need about a meter's worth of string or thread, or in this case, dental floss. You'll need a small compact object. In this case, I'm just using a little wad of magnetized ball bearings because it's really easy for me to attach them to the string. I just sort of thread them through this loop and I get a nice mass on the end of the string. Finally, you'll need an object of known length to calibrate the distance scale for your video analysis. And then you'll need your usual smartphone and computer to carry out the video analysis in Logger Pro. You may want to get a weight to hold down your pendulum during oscillation. But other than that, we're just simply setting up a pendulum. So let's go to it. You're going to want to set up your equipment like you see here. I have a book that's serving as a weight to hold the string in place. I even put a little piece of tape here so that I'd make sure that the oscillations were around one single point. I then suspend the mass down from a string uh, from that single point. We need about 60 or 70 centimeters of length or more so that our period of oscillation will be long enough that we can carefully measure the results. We're going to want to have the mass down here at the bottom, and then we're going to have an object of known length in the frame so that we can calibrate our distance scale of our measurements. To make the measurements, we're going to want to film straight on, right, rather than at the angle like I'm filming right here, so that this projects uniformly onto a flat xy coordinate plane, and we can measure the positions and velocities accurately. From here, we'll go ahead and we will pull the mass back. We want to get about 45 degrees from vertical, and we don't want it colliding with the wall. We want it oscillating in a single vertical plane. So we release it, and it will oscillate back and forth, and you want to film over several oscillations. Our ultimate goal is to measure energy conservation through several oscillations as energy moves from kinetic to potential and back. When you're doing your Logger Pro analysis, make sure that you set the scale for your video as you normally would. And from there, go ahead and work through your video frames. It's very helpful to find positions in your video when the ball is about at its minimum height. And at that point, you can go ahead and set your coordinate system uh, to have its origin there. And that will make your Y values register correctly uh, the difference from the minimum height. Uh, it's also helpful to turn off the data points um, by hitting this little toggle trails button. Uh, that way you can you won't get confused as you click through multiple oscillations. When you're finished with your Logger Pro analysis, you should get data that looks something like this, where you have a clear oscillation back and forth in the x and y direction. You should go through a total of three complete oscillations. So one, two, three. This one went to three and a half, or three and a quarter. Now we can paste everything that we have into a spreadsheet program and go ahead and annotate the column headings with the units and uh, variables in question. This will help us label our uh, axes when we create graphs later. Uh, we, need everything, we have everything we need in for the energy except for the mass, which I can measure in kilograms. And for my particular object, I estimated that it was about 15 grams based on a scale measurement that I have. And from here, I can go ahead and figure out the potential energy and the kinetic energy. So let's start with kinetic energy in joules. I'm going to say that's 0.5 times the mass, remembering that in spreadsheet notation, I want to put dollar signs around it. So when I paste it, it stays frozen on that cell. And then it's times the uh, velocity squared, so I can just go ahead and take the x component squared plus the y component squared, and that'll give me the speed squared. And from there, I can just go ahead and paste that on down through my data set. Uh, repeat for the potential energy. Um, uh, for the potential energy in joules, we can measure that as mgh, so I can say that that's equal to the mass, uh, which is in cell F2, times g, which I can take as 9.81, 
times the height here, which is y, and because I uh, set my coordinate system to have a zero at the minimum, I don't have to subtract anything off on that. Finally, I can calculate the total energy in joules just by summing these two. And if you go ahead and do that, uh, you'll get the total energy, uh, which I can look at as a function of time. Uh, so I could, for example, look at how these three uh, quantities behave uh, and insert a chart uh, showing those results. So I'll want a scatter plot because the data are discrete. Uh, and I want this plotted as a function of time. And so what you can see here is the oscillation uh, of the kinetic and the potential energies back and forth as the red and blue data. But then the total data ends up as a, the sum of those two declining slowly over time. And so that decline is what we want to measure and determine the characteristic time constant of through a linear fit as outlined in the lab manual. I'm going to stop the setup at this point and turn it over to you. Good luck, and if you have any questions, feel free to post them to the forum.